What's up, hobby friends? My name is Casey, and welcome to another Miniature Rescue. Today, let's talk about that one thing that could really ruin your mini. This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Squarespace is the all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence and share what makes you unique in your hobby. The other day I was browsing around on eBay just checking things out as I tend to do and I came across a rather interesting model. Ragnar Blackman is a pretty iconic Warhammer model that came out in the early 90s and they've since redone the skull, but of course I am still a sucker for a lot of these older metal skulls. This Ragnar though has some issues. Let's take a closer look at him and you'll see what I mean. Okay, so here he is and what a model. The funny thing though is that there's really a lot more to this model than meets the eye. When you look at this model, the absolute standout issue is the face. And there's a reason for that. Faces are usually the first thing we notice in other people, including miniatures. Faces tell us more about a person than any other physical attribute and have always been socially important to humans. More often than not, we evaluate each other from first impressions based largely on facial expressions. The thing is that the paint job on this model is actually not bad. There are some issues here and there and some minor execution problems, but the face makes this model look worse than it actually does. This face has seen better days. You can see the chipped paint and the thousand cuts he's undergone at one point or another. But try and remove yourself from that a little bit. Take a look at the rest of the model. The armor, the edge highlighting, it's not too bad. And the wolf on his shoulder is actually pretty well done. There are a ton of times in miniature painting when we end up painting faces. Most of us aren't very good at it, myself included. In fact, one of the last armies I fully completed was a bunch of models without faces, on purpose. I made sure that not one of them had an actual face to paint so that I wouldn't have to deal with it. The last thing I wanna do is create the next meme marine. You know? What I'm trying to say is that painting faces is pretty hard. The question with Ragnar though, if I were to change his face, would that make this model look better even with pretty much the same paint job that he currently has? Well, let's find out. The first thing we're gonna need to do is clean up this model just a little bit. The backpack in particular does actually need some paint stripped off. It doesn't have any paint on it besides the flaky primer. So I'm gonna give it a quick soak in the sonic cleaner and then wire brush off the excess paint. Using some 97% isopropyl alcohol and a cotton swab, I'm going to aggressively take the paint off of the face. The isopropyl is great for cutting right through the paint and primer to get down to the metal. You could also use acetone for this, as it will absolutely get that paint off and not harm the metal at all. Just don't do that on plastic. A while back, I happened to pick up a new version of this model and I've actually been meaning to paint it. I feel like this is a good opportunity to put in some effort on this model while doing this little face experiment as well. So I'm going to simultaneously prep this guy and paint what will hopefully be an even better face than normal to kind of go in the opposite direction and see if a better face will in fact make an okay model that much better. So I start to prep the base for Ragnar number two some foam and bits on a larger base that makes him the same width and height as the new plastic model. That way he can still see play and look pretty good doing it. In order to get a smooth, thin coat of new primer on Ragnar, I use my airbrush to coat the area. This can also be done with a brush by painting the primer on. It's really up to you. I cover up the face in a few areas where I scrape some mold lines. I then came back in with some Sinores light blue primer and lightly covered up those areas again. Luckily, the paint color matches very closely with the previous color and it blended in nicely. Before we continue, let me tell you a little bit about Squarespace. Sharing what makes you unique in this hobby can be difficult. When you post a picture on a social media platform and someone asks, whoa, how did you do that thing with that model? First of all, thank you, I know it's kind of awesome. Let me tell you exactly how I did that thing. You're probably gonna take your time to type out a long explanation of the XYZ steps of how you got there, but that post will eventually be hard to find and probably never be able to be referenced again. Using Squarespace's easy to use custom templates, you can create that mini tutorial in minutes. And on top of that, share it directly to any social media page. Question answered, and you always have a way to access your personal library of hobby knowledge. I went ahead and created a fun hobby blog to capture the little things that I like about the hobby. To save them for later. It was really easy to set up and I quickly put together a tutorial on just painting faces. Everyone in this hobby has a unique perspective and with Squarespace you can absolutely share that with others in a very easy and fun way. 
Check out squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch that hobby blog, go to squarespace.com slash miniature rescues to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Thank you again, Squarespace, for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back to the painting. Okay, so some light cleaning and fixing and our main model is ready for some face paint. Now there are two ways to go when it comes to painting faces. The first way, and the easiest way, is to pick a base tone. So it can be any type of skin color. In this case, Ragnar is pretty pale, so I'll be starting with a medium pink. Once you've got good coverage and the paint is dry, you introduce a wash. A red wash works really well on the pink to bring in some warmth and shading for the face. This gives you all of those details pretty quickly. For darker skin, you can use a brown wash or even purple. I like purple because it adds a little bit of life, but brown definitely ties those skin tones together a bit more and adds realistic shading. You wanna make sure that the paint is absolutely dry before applying a wash. So in the meantime, I'm gonna go touch up some of the other parts of the model. Right now, a couple of the pouches on the model are a little bit of a messy yellow, while a different pouch has a darker purple leather look. I decided that it was probably much better to match the pouches and not try and overdo the yellow. Especially now that the face has been pulled back, the yellow is becoming too much of a focus. I'll follow that up with a reinforcement of the edge highlighting across the model. Just bring those lines into focus a bit more and complete the backpack that never got paint to begin with. The cloak got a coating of yellow to try and clean it up. Right now I'm liking that yellow, but it still may be too much by the end. We'll see how it goes. Once again, it's important to make sure that the paint is dry before applying more. So I'll take my time and paint in some other details. Of course, while doing this, I never realized that his hairline is a little bit more receded than I originally thought. So I had to go back in with some of that initial skin tone and fill in the little spots near the widow's peak. Luckily, the area was small and I needed to cover the face with the base coat again anyways. So I layered the paint over the raised details and made sure that the wash was still showing in the recesses. After that, I added a little bit of a lighter pink and went over the top half of the face, tracing the brow, cheeks, and nose in particular. This brings our attention to the top portion of the face and gives a frame for the eyes. Next up, we have the worst part, hands down. The eyes. Anyone who's painted miniatures knows that eyes are always a point of massive frustration. One eye will inevitably be looking off in the distance while the other one stares at its own shoes. For me, I try to avoid painting eyes at pretty much any cost. There are actually good reasons why as well, besides that I just don't want them to look terrible. Generally, you just won't notice. Your models are almost never being looked at so closely to really see the eyes. They're almost always on the table and at a reasonable angle, you just can't see them. So I generally default to painting in a color or leaving them white. I really like that it gives a model an even more sci-fi or fantasy look and I don't have to deal with the meme marine issue that plagues so many pupiled marines. Let me show you what I mean. I grabbed a picture of a space marine head. Let's go ahead hmm, and fill in the eyes using black. This will set you up to have a good outline around the eye and really define that shape. Once that's done, we can take some white and lay that over most of the black, preserving that black line. This is where having a really small and pointy brush comes into play. You want to dot that iris right in the middle of each eyeball. If it touches the top and bottom of the black, that's no big deal. To take a step further, try putting in a reflection. Just a little white dot in the same place on each eye and it really brings them to life. Or like I mentioned, just give the eyes a nice glow after you finish that first round of white. A little bit of thin down contrast around the edges, or better yet, good old fashioned Citadel glaze, if you can find some. Ink also works really well for this watered down. Either way, it's about knowing the specific steps to take in order to paint in those eyes. The more you do it, the better they're gonna turn out. Okay, so Ragnar number one is looking much better, and Ragnar number two has come pretty far in that he's on a base and ready to get the details filled in. Here's another tip to help out your face game a little bit. This is that second option, and where you get a little more control over where the color comes into the face. So I lay down a base coat much like before. Then I start by using lighter and lighter steps of that color to build up highlights around the brow, nose, and cheeks. Instead of adding a wash, I'm just gonna be a little more selective. The next step I like to take is to increase contrast and bring out more detail by bringing in a darker red tone. I thin this paint down so it's pretty runny and wipe off the excess moisture out of the brush. 
What this is doing is giving you a transparent glaze that helps you tint the paint that you already have down. I wanna make the shadows deeper and richer by going over them with a darker red that is also transparent. You get a nice natural shade on the skin. I'm gonna go over the recessed areas and paint them in by hand. Using a glaze and repeating the step makes the areas darker and darker, but keeps a nice smooth transition. Now it's a back and forth process where you wanna to continue to make the skin darker in shadowy areas and go a little brighter in the highlights toward the top and middle of the face. The result is often much nicer than using a wash because you really do have the ability to create sharper details where that wash might wash them out, make them a little soft. The basic concept is the same for both methods and rely on placing highlights and shadows in the same places. Using a wash just makes that process a little less accurate, but much faster. So it makes more sense for painting a lot of models at once. Let me demonstrate this in a little bit of a different way that might make a little more sense. For the face, I'm gonna start with that base tone. Then I'm gonna pick out those highlight areas and just put paint on all of them, bringing it in a little closer with each highlight, just making smaller and smaller lines. We're gonna highlight up those focal points. Now that you have an idea on how to go about painting in some faces, try it out. You don't even have to paint an entire model. Just cut a line of heads off of a sprue and go for it. The best part about heads is that they generally come attached at the neck and can absolutely be painted in batches still attached to the sprue that they come on. So the point of this video was pretty much to show how important painting a face can be when it comes to your miniatures. The quality is directly affected by how the face of the model looks. Let's take a look at Ragnar and see the direct differences. Honestly, it's pretty night and day. The face really brings it together and you don't necessarily notice the other issues that the model has. Remember, I didn't strip this model. The face, sure, but the rest of the model was just a little bit of touch up. Having even an okay looking face on this model brings this right up to a standard that can be played on a table. He looks pretty good and even has a nice gradient on his sword to help him stand out a little bit. So I took this cheap model, painted a few different things, fixed the main issue, and it's a playable model. And of course we can't forget the other Ragnar model. I figured it would be kind of fun just to paint this one alongside the other, partially to use it as another example piece, but also to paint him using the other model as inspiration. I liked a lot of the colors off of that original model and we lost some of that. So I brought in some of that feeling back with this one and tried to paint him how the original owner may have been thinking, albeit with a few differences that I thought would be cool, but still. I really couldn't help myself with the paper flag too. I happened to run across it online and I knew it would be a perfect fit for bringing this model back to its old glory. I'm also gonna be putting this model up for sale on eBay. Now that I have two of them, I really don't need both. So I'll be keeping the touched up model and someone else can have the fancy paper flag version. The auction will start at 99 cents and run for one week with the money going directly to help find more models to bring to life on this channel. Thank you all for the support and for joining me on another miniature rescue. If you like something about this video, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe as it really helps out the channel. Once again, I'm Casey and I will see you in the next video.